thank Fusion Fitness for letting us uh, do this here. We really appreciate that. So um, with that said, as you guys can see, the topic is permanent weight loss. Keyword permanent. So I mean, who's ready to learn how to look good naked? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to see your name. <laughs> so, so with that said, uh, I'll let Chris take over and get into the introduction of what we're going to present tonight. And uh, I hope you guys take a lot of information home and put it to use. All right, so we're going to talk about some permanent weight loss, some practical tips you guys can actually go home and start tomorrow. Okay? Um, so first of all, how many of you guys actually tried like, some sort of weight loss diet? Show of hands. Pretty much everybody, right? Some sort of weight loss diet? Yeah? Okay. How many of you guys have actually successfully keep like, kept that weight off? Like, burning the weight loss. Well, for how long? Not many years, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. For a few years. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's perfectly fine because this is the thing. Studies are showing that 95% of people in our country, that's the biggest problem, is keeping the weight off. The biggest, I mean, it's not a problem getting the weight off, but completely keeping it off for a sustainable amount of time is the biggest problem, okay? And even studies show that even five years later, people regain that weight and they double that weight again. Okay? So we're going to talk about some practical tips for you guys to take when we start tomorrow. Okay? okay, so this slide right here is actually going to give us you know, pretty much the whole overview of what the whole presentation is about. Okay? So it's going to be a lot of physiology, about metabolism, digestion, so kind of bear with me here. If you guys have any questions, I'll go back to this and answer whatever questions you guys have. Okay? So our bodies basically have two types of metabolism, okay? It's carbohydrate metabolism and fat metabolism, okay? There's two main energy sources that our bodies want to use, okay? And that's carbohydrates and fat. But our body wants to primarily use carbohydrates first, okay? But we want our bodies to use fats, okay? With metabolic rate, we don't want to completely cut carbohydrates out. We don't want them to go a little bit like lower. We want them to be at an optimal level to where we can sustain our metabolic rate, okay? Because what happens is if you guys cut out all your guys' carbs, metabolism actually suppresses, it goes down, and a whole host of metabolic adaptations occur. And I can talk about a whole presentation about those, but I'm not going to get into that here, okay? So now with digestion, okay? Let's take, for example, a big bowl of pasta, okay? So a big bowl of pasta is considered a high glycemic index carbohydrate. I mean, it's going to break into the bloodstream a lot faster than other carbs, okay? So let's say right when you take a bite of that carbohydrate, okay? The digestion starts in the mouth, from there it goes into the stomach, and then it goes into the small intestine, okay? Now, in the small intestine, depending on if it's a high or low GI part, so you're going to get either a high rise in blood sugar levels or a moderate rise. Okay? We want a moderate rise. But in this case, we're talking about a high rise, okay? So what's going to happen from the small intestine is our pancreas is actually going to signal insulin, okay? And that's a hormone that shuttles nutrients into the cells, okay? And in this case, what happens from the small intestine when insulin gets signaled is that glucose gets transported into two places, okay? The liver or the muscle, okay? But the caveat is that liver and muscle has a limited capacity to store glucose, okay? You can't just sit there and store a bunch of it in there, okay? And what do you guys think happens to the, to the glucose once it actually fills up the liver and the muscle? Any takers? Stores fat. Stores fat, exactly. It gets empty into body fat cells and it converts into fat, okay? So that's what happens when overfeeding occurs, and it just gets stored into extra fat, okay? Now, glucagon, that's actually the opposite hormone of insulin, okay? Um, two hours after a meal, usually, blood sugar levels actually go down, and what happens is the pancreas actually signals that hormone glucagon to come in and actually break down some of that stored glycogen in the liver and dump the glucose into the bloodstream to and other cells of the body so it can get things done, okay? So that's pretty much the overview of this. So hopefully it wasn't too like complex, but if you guys have questions, let me know, all right? All right, that was a lot of science yeah. and a lot of stuff to take in, so, okay. <laughs> so let's get into uh, macronutrients. And we're gonna get into this through an energy standpoint on how our body use it, utilize these macronutrients. So if you guys don't know what the three basic macronutrients are, it is protein, carbs, and then fats. So let's take a protein for an instance. Throughout the day, we want our protein levels to be balanced throughout the day at an optimal level, okay? So, protein is not our preferred substrate when it comes to energy, okay? We don't want that to, we don't want to use protein when it comes to energy. We want our protein levels to be at a positive nitrogen balance, not, not, not a negative nitrogen balance, okay? So, 
our go-to preferred, su uh, preferred energy substance will be carbohydrates. Like Chris was saying, our body stores the glucose and our glycogen stores, so we need to empty those out and utilize those, unless somebody stores fat. So after carbohydrates comes fat, that is a backup to carbohydrates. Once we're done using all that we can with carbs, then our body taps into the fat storage. Okay? We utilize that as energy. So in chronological order, we can go carbs, fats, and then proteins, we absolutely have to. Okay, so now you guys are probably thinking, what do we do with these macronutrients, okay? So as far as meals, okay, we want to keep carbohydrates small enough to limit insulin, like what we were talking about. And if you've got too much, it's almost like where your body just cannot metabolize all of those calories and they get stored as fat. Okay, so we want to keep carbohydrates at a moderate amount to limit insulin, okay? We advocate four to six hours apart in meal space, okay? The reason is because it stays close enough to stay ahead of hunger, you guys don't get too hungry, and it gives us enough time to get into deep fat issues between meals, okay? And so like Eric was saying with the energy substance, okay, your body's gonna use carbohydrates first, okay? So if you eat every two hours, you're not gonna have enough time for the body to transition over into fat to use that as the energy source, okay? Okay, this is an example of what insulin looks like in a bad uh, scenario, okay? So let's take example, for example, the, the bowl of pasta we're talking about, okay? That's a high glycemic index carb, and it's basically too many carbs for our body to handle at that city, right? Okay, so what happens when you eat it, you get a huge rise in insulin, right? Blood sugar levels go extremely high. Glycogen, glycogen already gets stored, muscle glycogen is already stored, and then what happens to the rest of that? It gets converted into body fat, okay? And when you get that huge insulin rise, it, it just falls all the way down hard. Okay? And that's why you feel fatigued, you feel hungry, you feel lethargic, lazy after a meal because that huge rise in blood sugar level, okay? And it just goes all the way down. What you guys want is a nice, you know, steady stream of like blood sugar level. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about some ways we can stabilize our blood sugars through carbohydrates throughout the day. So, pretty much, we want to, we want to keep our blood sugar levels nice and stable for our bodies to you know, perform well and optimize an optimum rate, okay? as well as our brains. So we don't want to get those hyperglycemic effects, of feeling lethargic, um, brain fog, feeling hunger pangs, just overall no energy, okay? So we want to keep these blood sugar levels stable. So we're going to do that by getting lower glycemic carbs, smaller amount of carbs in each meal, also along with combinations of protein, carbs, and fats. And by doing that, that's going to slow down the absorption of blood sugar, we stabilize those blood sugar levels and keep you energized and keep your satiety levels throughout the day, which you won't want to just you know, nit nitpicking at foods, snacking, and just you know, getting extra calories in your body doesn't need. Alright, so some things we have to talk about carbs. Who likes carbs? Everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we love carbs. Alright, so must be enough to support metabolism. Talking about. You guys don't want to completely cut carbohydrates out. You guys don't want to go too low. You guys want to keep in a moderate amount to support metabolism. Okay? okay, number two, quality. So I will talk about more of these uh, quality carb sources in the next few um, slides, so just bear with me for a second. But when, when we talk about quality, we want to get more of the lower GI carbs or the complex carbs, the less minimally refined, less processed garbage, okay? And number three goes hand in hand with that. So time of digestion and satiety levels. So what we mean by time of digestion is when you take in these quality carb sources, your body metabolism is going to take, it's going to work harder to break down all these nutrients. So you're going to get that thermic effect of food, which means that your, your body is going to be burning calories while it's breaking down all these nutrients. And it's not going to, you're not going to feel hungry, you're not going to, your energy levels aren't going to plummet, and your satiety levels are going to be high. Okay. And time around physical activity, and we are huge advocates in partitioning our carbohydrates around pre and post workout meetings. Okay? And the reason is because your body can actually regulate that glucose a lot better at that time. Okay? Insulin sensitivity is very high at that time, so the glucose is actually going to be stored into your guys' muscle cells instead of fat cells. Okay? So if you guys want that piece of cake or that cookie or something like that, I highly recommend you guys do it around the pre or post workout. Okay? Okay, so the slide we've been waiting for. So, examples of good carbohydrate choices. Uh, like I said, we want to aim for the lower glycemic ones, more complex carbs that are going to be higher in fiber, 
You know, it's going to keep our energy levels up, keep our blood sugar levels nice and stable. Our body's going to work harder to break down these nutrients. So as you can see, we have a couple of examples of, you know, some veggies, some fruits, some grains, some other great choices could be like black beans, brown rice, um, geez, sweet potatoes, red potatoes. So you've got a whole host of good selections, but you're not limited. Now, let's move into some bad carbohydrate foods. <laughs> so these are the ones we are talking about earlier in the slides that are just higher in the GI. You're going to get that huge insulin spike, and it's going to plummet in about one to two hours. You know, your body's not going to work hard to break down those nutrients, so you're going to feel hungry in one or two hours. That's why we feel hungry. So examples of that are just like high sugary things, like you know, sodas, um, energy drinks, cookies. Um, High sugar and bread. Yeah, a lot of all the things. Yeah, there's all the good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so these are the things we want to just kind of steer away from, and we want to aim more towards the complex and uh, lower GI carbs. All right, so protein. Okay, we recommend getting high quality protein sources. Okay, and the reason is because these have all the essential amino acids that your guys' body needs. Okay, there's 20 amino acids in the body. Nine of them are essential. Okay, your body cannot synthesize these proteins or these amino acids without food or supplementation, okay? So high quality protein sources give you these nine essential amino acids, okay? Also, another reason why you guys want to have protein, okay? Slows digestion of other nutrients. So go back to that example of that big bowl of pasta. If you guys would have had some protein with that, digestion would have been a lot slower, and you guys would not have got that huge rise in uh, blood sugar level, okay? Also, another reason to have high quality protein, okay? The thermic effect is very high, okay? So that means that when you guys are eating that, your bodies are actually working very hard, you know, breaking down those nutrients. Okay? And studies even show that you can burn 80 to 100 calories a day if you have these high quality protein sources. How many of you have had like, you guys have eaten something and your body just warms up and you guys just feel like you guys are sweating or something like that? Right? So that's the perfect effect of the food. Your body's working really hard at that time, like that. Another reason to have protein, okay? It increases hunger, okay? And it leaves you satiated. It's actually the number one macronutrient out of the three that you know, leaves you the most satiated and full throughout the, the meals. <clears throat> so some examples of some lean protein sources, right? Chicken, turkey, white fish, whey protein, okay? They're all high quality protein sources. These ones are all lower in fats. All right, so now on the flip side, some higher fat protein choices. Now keep in mind, these are not bad protein sources. Okay, they're still considered high quality protein sources. The only thing is, they have a higher fat content, okay? So all you have to do is just, it depends on what your fats are at, what your diet's like, what your calorie intake is like, okay? So just be wise when you guys are, you know, choosing protein sources. Maybe you guys need some higher fats, maybe some leaner sources, okay? Okay, let's get into um, some breakfast choices that we commonly make. So just by looking at this, can I get a show of hands of, does this look familiar to you guys? Which you guys might have on day days for breakfast? Okay. Don't be shy. Gotcha. No, that's fine. So what I call I call this is just a typical American um, diet, typical American breakfast. You know, we're very busy. Um, we have a lot of responsibilities. We're on the go constantly. So it's like you don't have time to make food, right? You don't have time to eat right? But at the end of the day, if you think about it, it's kind of an excuse because you could be prepping these meals the night before and preparing yourself for that day. So let's get into the first one, okay? Bre a Burger King breakfast sandwich. 36 grams of protein, 98 grams of carbs, 68 grams of fat for a total of 1,150 calories. Jesus. That is a ton of calories in one sitting, okay? Your guys' bodies cannot metabolize all those calories in one sitting. The majority of those calories are gonna be stored as body fat, okay? That is enough for someone to possibly take it in one day, let alone one meal. So as you can see, it goes down the list. It's just, you know, bad foods. Our bodies aren't going to work to break these down, so we're going to be hungry in like an hour or two. Okay, so let's talk about some good selections we can make. So two pieces of whole wheat bread. You've got yourself a low glycemic carb. It's going to keep your blood sugar levels nice and stable for several hours. Then you've got your lean protein source, three to four egg whites if you choose. Then you can toss in a little bit of fat in there. Okay. As you can see, the difference in calories, it's huge. Now, if you're really pressed for time, you can just go for half a cup of oatmeal and throw in a scoop of protein. Same thing, good quality, low 
complex carb. It's going to keep your blood sugars le blood sugar levels nice and stable throughout the day. You guys aren't going to want to nitpick at food, and you guys are just going to feel satiated until your next meal. And we recommend this type of meal. <laughs> All right, some bad lunches, okay? Right off the bat, that one glares at you guys right there, right? A Whopper with cheese and large fries, okay? Um, Sounds good. It does something. <laughs> you, you, you survive this first, too. <laughs> okay, so basically with that meal right there, it's like over 70 grams of fat just for that meal, okay? That's the total amount somebody can have for a day, okay? So it's over 1,000 calories. Like Eric said before, it's just going to get stored as body fat, okay? Chicken, chicken Caesar salad looks good on paper, but what ruins it is the Caesar salad dressing, okay? It's got a high fat content in there and it brings calories up, okay? Another good one looks good on paper. Six inch chicken breast soup, okay? What ruins it is the cheese and the mayonnaise, okay? It brings fat content up and it brings calories up. Now here's a good one for some good lunches, okay? A four ounce deli turkey breast, okay? A high quality lean protein source. And you have two slices of whole grain bread, okay? That's a low glycemic index carb. It's a great uh, choice for lunch right there. And you have a grilled chicken salad, okay? This time it's without the cheese and without the mayonnaise, okay? Fat is brought down, calories is down about two, three hundred, okay? And then you have a six inch chicken sub, okay? Without mayonnaise or cheese this time. Fat content is down about 15 grams, calories down about 200, okay? All right, so let's get into the meal we look forward to throughout the day, which is dinner. Um, these are some bad selections, or just examples of bad dinners. So, six ounce ribeye steak. Who doesn't love a nice cut of steak? Oh, okay. But when it comes to ribeye, that's that's been shown to be you know more of a fatty cut of steak. So for example, six ounces of that, 47 grams of fat. Like I said, that is enough for one person to take in possibly for one day. Let alone you're trying to get that in with one meal. So it's like your body cannot metabolize that. It's going to be stored in body fat. On top of that, you're adding in a baked potato with butter. Okay, more fat, more carbs. Then, you know, a house salad, it sounds great, but look at how much fat is in that. That is probably coming from like some sort of a Caesar salad dressing that's just loaded with fat. Another example, pizza. Come on, who doesn't love pizza? Four slices of pizza though. Look at that, 1,280 calories. Like I said, that could be one person's calorie intake for the day, let alone you're expecting your body to sit there and metabolize all these calories. It's just not gonna happen. So some good examples of some dinners you guys can do. Four ounces of a chicken breast, good quality lean protein source. Then you have your complex carb, half a cup of rice, preferably brown rice if anything, a salad or veggies with that. As you can see, you're getting that balance of protein, carbs, and fats. It's going to hold you off for several hours. You're not going to want to pick out foods. Another example, five ounces of baked fish, good quality lean protein source. On top of that, you've got your steamed veggies, then you got your quality complex carb source, which is a half-baked potato or a sweet potato. Again, these foods are going to keep your satiety levels nice and high throughout the night. <clears throat> All right, and to wrap up this presentation, we have a, a checklist for you guys to go home and actually apply these tips tomorrow, okay? So we're going to start it off with balanced meals, okay? So I want you guys to picture the plate right in front of you guys, okay? I want you guys to divide that plate up into thirds. You have all three macronutrients on there. You have protein, carbs, and fats, and that's a perfect way to actually start off tomorrow is balance your guys' meal with protein, carbs, and fat each meal, okay? All right, number two, so meal spacing and frequency. So like we were talking about earlier, we want to space our meals out about four to five hours, give our bodies time to digest all those nutrients, okay? And when it comes to frequency, we want to keep it right in the middle. We don't want to go too high. We don't, have to have, we don't want to have six to eight meals eight every two hours. Okay, that's not really doing much. Okay, we're thinking more of the low ends of three or four meals, spread out four to five hours, you know, keeping your satiety levels high, keeping your blood sugar levels nice and stable throughout the day. All right, so carbs, okay? So amount, like we talked about earlier with that example of the bowl of pasta, okay? We want to keep carbs at a moderate amount so we don't get that huge rise in blood sugar levels and then tap into insulin. Okay. Now, the amount of carbohydrates is going to depend on a lot of people. It's going to depend on a lot of factors, okay? Activity level, body type. I mean, there's so many things it depends on. But for a safe bet to go home tomorrow and start applying, just go with a moderate amount, okay? Go with complex carbs over simple carbs, okay? Lower in the glycemic index, higher in fiber. They're going to fill you up more. Your body's going to work harder to break down those nutrients, all right? 
Okay, so let's get into fat intake. So throughout the day, we want to get ourselves a good amount of fat, but we want to balance out those different fats. So let's start off by getting some polyunsaturated fats, which are going to be more of your oils. Then you want to get a balance of monounsaturated fats, which are going to be your nuts, your peanut butter, almond butters, avocados, almonds. Then move on to saturated fats. Get yourself a balance of that, which is going to come through a lot of animal proteins. So key thing is to get a balance of all of those. Okay, so protein. Stick to high quality protein sources, all right? Whether it's lean or it's a little bit more fatty, just make sure the high quality protein sources like chicken, beef, eggs, whey protein, cottage cheese, turkey, uh, they're all high in protein, have all the amino acids your body needs, so. Okay, number six, consistency and adherence. Um, this is not a quick fix. Um, this is something that's a lifestyle change, so you guys need to take it one day at a time. Um, there's going to be ups and downs with it, but the key thing is to you know be consistent with it, and at the end of the day, you have to adhere to the plan. All right, so number seven is huge, okay? And it's basically like a challenge for you guys tomorrow, but we're actually challenging you guys to do, okay? So we are huge advocates for ourselves, our clients, and everybody to track your guys' food, okay? Journal your guys' food. Go home tomorrow and start in the morning and write down everything you guys eat throughout the day, okay? I promise you guys we'll be able to monitor everything, we'll be able to assess what you guys are eating, and you guys will be able to make adjustments, okay? You guys will look at that at the end of the night and be like, hey, I need to take out this dinner. You know, I need to add in a higher quality protein source. I need to limit my carbohydrates, take out my simple carbohydrates, some bread, some sugars, okay? Monitor, assess, and adjust. Track your guys' foods, all right? And number eight, I think is probably one of the most important ones on here, which is accountability and lifestyle. Um, at the end of the day, we are adults here, we're all adults. So, I mean, we have to hold ourselves accountable for what we do and what we put in our bodies. Um, no one's forcing us to do this. So, you know, you, you just have to hold yourself accountable. You know, if you're going to fall off the plan, you know, just say, oh, I messed up, get back on track, you know, tomorrow's a new day. Lifestyle. Like I said, it's not a quick fix. It's something that you have to transition into very slowly, take it one day at a time. Um, you know, I, I try telling people too, if you have kids, you know, do it for them, set the example, set the bar high, show them you know, how this lifestyle should be lived, and you know, just enjoy it. Because I mean, the last thing you want to do is sit here and dread doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. You, know, you don't want to wake up and just be like, oh man, I gotta eat this, I gotta do this and that. You, know, you, you want to look forward to this, and you want it to be a lifestyle that's long-term and sustainable. Okay. And keep a watchful eye on your guys' total calorie intakes, okay? your nutrition, your physical activity, manage your stress levels, and get adequate sleep, okay? Those five factors will play such a big role in permanent weight loss, okay? And at the end of the day, you guys will look good naked. <laughs> <laughs>